Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski. Let's do some science today. And today let's talk about the impedance matching. Impedance. For example, you have a video transmitter and the specification says that it has an impedance of 50 ohms. Then you take some coax cable and it also says that the impedance of this is 50 ohms and you kind of like suspect that you should probably connect the antenna that also has the impedance of 50 ohm. What's, what's the impedance? Why do we match the impedance so that one impedance is equal to the different impedance and stuff like that? This is unfortunately kind of let's say, um, sometimes complicated, sometimes counterintuitive and what's more important, this is the the higher the frequency, the more complicated stuff is getting. So as long as you are dealing with the low frequency, even audio signal, you probably do not have to worry much about the impedance or when you just want to signal something. It's simple. It's simple, but when you want to transfer power or work with higher frequencies, it's getting much and much and much and much complicated. But first of all, let's talk what the impedance is. Impedance, of course, is measured in ohms because we all match uh, from the specification we get the impedance in ohms but the impedance it's not a single unit it's the impedance is the sum of all the resistances that are happening somewhere in our circuit resistances this is very important because we have we have the resistance the resistance which is of course measured in ohms and this is the uh, the, the resistance of the, like, the, you have the resistor and it has the resistance of some ohms and this is static. This is more or less static uh, throughout the whole frequency range. But then almost everything, almost everything has also capacitance, even something that's not capacitance, uh, eh, even something that's not really a capacitor has some slight, slight capacitance. And on top of that, also the, uh, how it's called, the inductance, inductance, because when you have the inductor, uh, it also has some frequency based resistance, inductance into it. And the impedance is a sum of all of those three, plus also the reactance, reactance given into one, one value. When we are dealing with very, very low frequencies and let's say hobby great, we can just uh, ignore the existence of the capacitance, inductance and reactance in our, our, our electronic thingies and only work with the resistance. But when we are starting to work with higher frequencies and so on and the real life components, because the higher the frequency, for example, the lower the uh, resistance re resistance of the capacitor is getting but the higher the resistance of the inductor is getting and this is like i said it's getting slightly 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 more complicated nevertheless you do not have to know all the details what is enough that the inductance inductance not the inductance the impedance is the sum of different kinds of resistances that are happening in our circuit then there is something called the output output impedance and input 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 impedance what's the difference ohm's law says that if uh, electricity is flowing is going through the circuit it has to have both the voltage and the current you cannot have the voltage without the current and you cannot have the current without the voltage of course the higher the resistance the lower the current with the same voltage will be and and the opposite uh, and the opposite way and let me get the equation right i always forget how this is yeah i equals v divided by r because the current going through the circuit equals voltage divided by the resistance. In our case, this is the impedance. In our case, this is the impedance. And this is true. This, this means that if you have some kind of um, device, what kind of device? Does not matter. It might be VTX or the camera or the amplifier or whatever. The the thing that we like to say that like to think exists without 
the resistance and the current and the voltage indeed has at the output a small let's say a resistor which indeed is the has the sum of the impedance because when this thing um, outputs some voltage it also means that some of the current will also get have to go through and this is more or less how it's how it's working the higher the resistance on the uh, output of the device for example vtx or the amplifier then the less current we will be able to draw from with the same voltage from the device the lower the resistance uh, on the output of the device the higher current with the same voltage will be getting and also the higher voltage with this no the higher current with the same voltage we will be getting i think i'm lost nevertheless then if we take a look for example at the antenna we also like to think that the antenna is something that um, also gets some voltage into it and the radiates the voltage into the into the void this is not true this is not true the antenna or for example different uh, uh, different Mm, amplifier or a cable or anything like that also needs some kind of both voltage and current to be working and this means that somewhere in the input of the device we also have small impedance input impedance that connects this device to the ground that means if we put some voltage into it the small resistor uh, will drain the voltage, drain the current, and some of the voltage will go into antenna or the amplifier. And if we want to connect this to this, we have uh, impedance matching. And now, there are three cases in which we should uh, match, really match the impedance uh, to match, or actually not always match, we have to take impedance into consideration. Case number one. Case number one, we are interested only in the voltage. We want to get some voltage from device A to the device B, remembering that over here we have some impedance and also here we have some, let's say, parasite resistance that drains some of the, of the current from the from the uh, from the device if we are interesting only in the voltage in the low frequency applications when the um, for example we just want to get some kind of a signal over the cable the rule is that we don't need impedance matching at all what we need we have to keep the output impedance low and the input impedance high what does, it give, what does it give us? A low output impedance means that we will be getting with a small current a lot of voltage and the low input and the high input impedance will mean that we will not suck a lot of voltage we will not suck the this works like a voltage divider we have one uh, oh, maybe I will just we have the voltage divider so like this the higher this resistor is, the higher value of this resistor is, the less voltage we will be losing. And because we are losing very little voltage of the high resist, how input resistance, how in high input impedance on the receiver device, we are getting a lot of voltage and it's working perfectly. For example, for the audio applications and we have absolutely no problems as long as the output impedance is low and the input impedance is high because we get the high voltage with a decent amount of power to from the something to the amplifier and so on the second case we have to consider for the impedance matching is when we want to transfer power yeah we like power because power is good power like p equals current times voltage this is a very important equation and let's keep it over here because once again we have a device a with the some output impedance connected to a voltage divider of the device B as an input impedance and we want to transfer as much power as possible. Power defined as current times voltage. If, what will happen if for example we have very high 
output impedance and very low input impedance. We will be able to get very little voltage from the current that this, this part will, will require. If on the other hand this will be a very low resistor, the very high resistance, but here we're gonna have a very low resistor. In theory we will be getting a lot of current, but very little voltage. This turns out into a very interesting, very interesting graph. Here we have power, power, and here we have the resistance of the, the not the resistance, the mm, ratio between the input and the output uh, impedance. And it goes like this. Here we have the voltage, here we have the current, and how do you think? where the power is, where the power is peaking. The power is peaking somewhere here. Somewhere here. Guess where? Here, when the ratio of the input to the output impedance is one to one. This is why when we want to transfer power, we have to start matching the output impedance to the input impedance. They have to be equal to transfer as much power as we want. Of course, the voltage in the process, because the, the impedances of both devices are the same, will drop by half. Uh, also, the, the, some of the current will go away because will be drawn by the input uh, impedance of the device, but still we will be transferring as much power as possible. This applies to transmission lines, this applies to antennas and everywhere where we really want to transfer power, not the voltage to the other device. Power transfer, we have to start matching impedance so that the output impedance is equal to the input impedance. If they don't match, we have to figure out something, for example, by adding some resistance somewhere uh, or uh, bridging the input of the device to the ground with a resistor. There are, let's say, quite a few possibilities over there. The third case for the impedance matching is the high frequency. High frequency. By high frequency, I mean the frequencies above few megahertz. Because when we are working with above few megahertz, and not only we have to take care of the power transfer into consideration, but we also have to take into the considerations the reflections. The reflections. The, the rule is, if the in input impedance is not matching the output impedance, we will be losing some of the signal, both voltage and the current, because some of the signal will be reflected to the source. How it works? We have the device A with some resistor, of course. Then we have a device B. And let's say this is 50 ohms and this is 100 ohms different impedance. The signal. The signal will go through. Notice that, oh, what's happening? What's happening? The input impedance of this device is different than my output impedance. And some of the signal will be reflected and go back into the uh, device as a waste power, because as a waste signal, because this is output, not input, and only part of the signal will get through. Exactly the same situation will happen, if, for example, if this will be 100 ohms, and this will be only a 50 ohms. Signal goes from the transmitter with the impedance of 50 ohms, enters the something, for example, cable with the impedance only of the 50 ohms, 150 ohms, decides, oh, the impedance is not matching, and goes back. Uh, reflections. Reflections suck and they are, they, if the impedance of all the components like the coax cable, the connector, the input, the output are not matching, we will be losing a lot of signal, the power and the voltage and the current thanks to the reflections. If you want to explain, if I would like to explain what the reflection is, let's have an example. Let's have an example with the glass of water or the water. We have the surface of the water. And as everybody knows, the water has different, let's say, density than the air and we are looking. What happens? What happens if you look at the glass of water under some angle? 
You will not be able to see through the water to the bottom of the glass. Of course, some of this will work, but not only over here, but also you will see reflections of something else, for example, a human standing over there, reflection over the water. Why the reflection happened? Because the density and the... Ref I think this is called the refraction ratio of air and the water are not matched. They are different. This is why when those two values are different, we have some kind of reflection. Of course, exactly the same thing will be happening if to the border between air and the water, we will be over here as the swimmer we would like to see what's happening above of course we will see something above like a sun okay i wrote the black sun but also we will see the reflection of what's happening in the air not all the information will be getting through exact more or less exactly the same is happening with electrical signals over the transmitters cables connector and stuff like that when the impedances are not matched then some of, the reflect, some of the signal will be reflected back to the source and we will lose that part. The bigger the difference between two impedances, the bigger the reflection ratio will be and the less signal will be getting through. This is why uh, most we are usually use, starting to, start, at least trying to use 50 ohm antennas, 50 ohm uh, coax cables, 50 ohm transmitters, 50 ohm connectors, and so on and so on and so on, to minimize the amount of the reflection on the, on the, on the cable that leads, for example, from the video transmitter to the antenna. Okay, that's all for today. Mm, the thought for today is that if you are working with low frequencies and you want to want, only want to signal something, you do not have to match the impedance at all, as long as you remember that the output impedance should be low so we can drain more voltage and the current, and the input impedance should be high so less of this voltage is connected to the ground, but when we are trying to transfer power and when we are trying to uh, work with high frequencies, we have to match impedance so that the input is equal to the output impedance and ma make some tricks, get the correct components and, and stuff like that. So, that's all for today. Until the next one. Bye.